Thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us. We're very honoured. We'd like to focus our chat, at least at the start, around the use of technology in task-based language teaching. So, thinking about that, what role do you see technology having in language learning and in task-based language teaching? I have to admit, first of all, that I have never explored task-based language teaching or use of technology in task-based language teaching. But, but in essence, the principles that govern task-based language teaching in the classroom are going to have to govern the use of task-based um, uh, task teaching uh, using technology. And the, the, the essential principles are that um, learners are going to perform activities which we call tasks, and these tasks are going to have um, four essential characteristics. That is to say, they are going to involve the learners on focusing primarily on meaning. They are going to involve some type of gap with the purpose that gap. The learners are going to have to use their own linguistic resources. They're not going to be given the language that they need. And perhaps most crucially, it's all going to be directed at achieving some communicative outcome. So if one is going to use task-based language teaching, technology for task-based language teaching, then it seems to me what is quite essential is that um, there must be some kind of communicative outcome that learners must be informed about and that must guide the information, the input that they get through technology. Um, I don't think I've given a very good answer to that. And I think I probably have to think a lot more about how to use technology in, in task-based language teaching. I talked a little bit to Michael about it, and I, I think, I, as I said, I, I think that the crucial thing is that the information that learners are given, because what technology is going to do is to provide learners with, with input, with information, or at least that's one of its major uses. And this input, this information that the te technology provides them with must, must be used to achieve some outcome. OK, thank you very much. So in thinking about that now, I know you may have only seen one or two machinima, and this is what the Camelot project is all about. It, it's making machinima to see how that fits in and if you can aid uh, language teaching and learning. So having seen one or two machinimas, um, what challenges and opportunities might exist for a task-based approach to using machinima in language teaching and learning? Well, I've, I've only looked fully at one machinima, apart from bits and pieces that flashed up on the screen while I was talking to Michael. I looked at one that Michael sent to me which was the one about the piano player. Um, and what, what that did was to provide a rather fascinating, interesting story about a person who, uh, from the time he was a child, became a piano player, etc. So the issue is, how can you use that machine? How can you use that input, pictorial input and also verbal input, um, in order to achieve some, some outcome. Um, and I don't, I, I couldn't actually see how it could arrive at some particular outcome. So let me, let me talk about how I think, you know, you might use Mashima <coughs> to, to achieve some outcome. You yeah. might devise a Mashima that would perhaps propose, propose some kind of, pose some kind of moral problem um, to do with, with a relationship and 
what a, a particular person should do in a particular situation. So the outcome would be asking the learners to decide what this particular person should do in that situation. Um, and I, as I said, if you're going to use Machima in task-based language teaching, the outcome that the learners need to achieve as a result of watching the Machima has got to be made clear to them before they start to watch the Machima. And then the actual task is going to follow on after they've watched the Machima. The Machima itself is not going to be the task. Now, whether you can use Machima in such a way that they create they create a task which learners have to perform while they're watching the Machima, I don't know. But from what I saw, you would need to actually create a situation. That's, that's interesting. How about if we were teaching in Second Life, which several of us here do, and we had something like, for example, one that we have used is an airport uh, check-in. So people go to check-in and there are problems and things they have to sort out. How about using that sort of scenario and the students making their own machinima? Which yeah, then this is, is what Michael was talking about, the possibility of students making their own machinima. And the process of making it, I suppose, in essence, the outcome becomes the making of the Mashima, right? That is yes. to say, that is to say, presumably they're given certain options that they can use to make the Mashima, certain responses that they make at certain stages, and this then creates the, the Mashima. So the purpose is the actual making of the Mashima there. So I, yes. think, I think basically maybe there's, there's two ways that you can use Mashima. One, as I have said, is the Mashima creates some issue, right? Some problem, some issue, which they are going to have to discuss to solve. So the Mashima simply provides the input for the task that they will, that they will perform after they have watched the Mashima. And as I've said, I think they've got to be made aware of what the, the, the communicative outcome, the problem, the problem that they're going to have to solve. They're going to, they, they have to know while they, while, why they are watching the Mashima. So that's one possibility. And the other possibility is the one that you just said, which is that you create, that, 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 the, that the students themselves create the Mashima. So they have to, if you like, go through a series of options, make selections at different times, and they arrive at the Mashima that they have created, so that the outcome is the Mashima itself. So in other words, we're really thinking of Mashima as providing the input for task-based performance, or that the Mashima becomes the outcome because they are creating the Mashima. Does that make sense to you? It does, absolutely, yes. And also, of course, if you have the machinima at the end of it, you've got a very good assessment tool and a record of development over whatever period of time you're making machinima. So, yes, that's absolutely ideal. Well, I, mean, you know, I mean, there are other things about task-based language teaching. I mean, one of the, the main things about task-based language teaching is that there needs to be attention to form, right? There needs yes. to be a focus on form. Now the focus on form is normally created through interaction. It's created through, in particular, through various reactive devices that one speaker does to direct or attract learners' attention to form, such as recasting, requests for clarification, etc. that push learners to pay attention to form. So I don't know. I don't know how you're going Going to do that in Mashima. How are you that, going to do? How are you going to induce this attention to form? Surely that would come in the script writing. If they're developing the storyline. 
well, if people are developing either a storyline in which they're then going to film or a script um, for a dialogue which they're going to record as the machinima, then the so attention to the script. No, they, they would write the script own. or they create, they create they, the script. Absolutely, yes. They'd be yeah. given the scenario. So, yeah. so one possibility is that they, they watch a mashima and they create the text to go along with the, with, with the mashima. And of course, if this is done in pairs, then there is opportunity for what are called language-related episodes where they can talk about the particular language that they're going to use. So yes, that's a distinct possibility. The idea of creating a script to go with a mashima, and the script becomes the the outcome. So yeah, that would work, and that would be compatible with with with, with what I understand as dark space language teaching. So if we carry this idea over several weeks, maybe or several sessions, so that writing the script might be the outcome of the one session, and then actually producing the machinima was the outcome of another session, or maybe two sessions on. Um, does that still fill the criteria for um, task-based language? Now, now hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So the first step is that they they create a script, or the first step is that they want watch a machina and create the script to go along with the machina. Or create a script for a new one. They don't necessarily have to watch a machinima before they create a script. They have to be introduced to a scenario, as you say, an ethical or a moral problem or some problem that's got to be solved. So lots and lots of discussion and then possibly create their own script for a machinima. Would that still fit the criteria? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean that that would introduce another possibility, and that is that they 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 watch a machina which doesn't have an end. It creates a situation, but there is but the but the but the the denouement, the denouement is not part of the machina, and so what they would then have to do is to discuss what they think the end of the uh, the story was, and then make a another machina to reflect the end. Oh, so in other words, pretty... yeah. So in other words, yeah, they, 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 they watch they watch a machina two or three minutes, but it doesn't show you what eventually happens to the characters or in the situation. So they would then have to discuss what they think is the end of an appropriate ending. Yeah? Yes, and that then they it. would have to make the machina to show the ending. And that is definitely that's definitely task like, yeah. Oh, that's an interesting one. We haven't actually made any machinimas like that, but guess what we'll be doing next? <laughs> that's uh, given us a really well, good you idea. See, you're, beginning to, you're beginning to make me think about how, how you can do this. Yeah. Um, as I said, the essential principle is what is the outcome that you want them to achieve? And how are they going to use language to achieve that outcome? How are you, get them, how are you going to get them to use the language to achieve the outcome? Okay, right. Thank because you very that's much. That's the essence of task-based teaching. Yes. Um, and yeah, ultimately what we've got is the idea of the national providing input to that they use to achieve some outcome, or the idea that they're going to make their own machina, in which case the making of the machina is the outcome. Yes, I think you could uh, work on this over a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, and probably make quite a good project out of it. We should certainly work on that probably, and try. I think you probably could, yeah. Yeah, I think you so probably thank, could. Thank you very much for that idea. Okay, so another question that uh, we've, we've thought about is, uh, what are some of the problems associated with the implementation of task-based language teaching, and, and why has it been so difficult? Well, a lot of people have been critical of it. Um, right. I mean, the people who have been critical of it are, by and large, the people who write books that are not task-based. <laughs> All right, um, is that it? <laughs> it, it? It has been difficult to implement, insofar as it's very difficult to actually buy a, a, a language course that is task-based, that starts from elementary and goes right on to a, to a higher level. There are still very, 
There's plenty of textbooks that include tasks, but there's no task-based course published that I know. And so in that respect, it has proved quite difficult to implement. And um, one of the reasons is, of course, publishers. The publishers tend to don't want to take risks because the production of a new course book is an expensive business. And what they tend to do is to ask for sample materials and then they give it to their, uh, their, their salespeople and their salespeople take it off to teachers and teachers take a look at it. And if it's something completely new and something they're not familiar with, then they say, no, we can't do that. And so as a result, you, it's, it's really quite difficult to get publishers to publish a task-based language course. Uh, and yeah. I know because I've tried and failed. Oh dear. And the alternative, is, of course, is that teachers have to write it all themselves. And that's, uh, that's a very, very big task to try and yeah, there, there you have are been Yeah, there have been some sort of more sort of ESP type task-based courses that have been developed. Um, don't ask me which ones, but I, kn I know that in Japan, some people in Japan have produced a course book that, 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 that deals with a particular type of communication and that they, they have developed task-based materials for that. I mean, of course, you know, task-based language teaching really does lend itself to ESP because because one way of approaching ESP is to ask what are the target tasks that learners need to perform and then to uh, identify those target tasks and then to devise pedagogic tasks that reflect those target tasks that learners need to perform. So for example, if you have a group of learners who want to be receptionists, then you look at the different tasks that receptionists need to do and then you create pedagogic tasks that reflect those real life tasks that receptionists need to do. So in ESP, I think, yes, um, there, there, there are task-based materials and a task-based approach really does lend itself. The doubts, the doubts about task-based language teaching come in when it comes to general course books. And the idea that um, uh, you can adopt a completely task-based approach from beginners or near beginners up to a very advanced level, etc. And that's where there is resistance. Um, one reason why there's resistance is that people think that you can't really do task-based language teaching with very low proficiency learners. You know, I constantly hear how can I do task-based language teaching these? My students don't know enough English to be able to speak. <laughs> and of course, the misconception there is that task-based language teaching necessarily does involve speaking tasks. In fact, task-based language teaching can involve input-based tasks, listening tasks, reading tasks. And these can be really quite simple, etc. And so it is perfectly possible to devise a task-based task materials for beginners, but they have to be input-based. And you have to build up initial competence through input-based tasks. Because beginners obviously don't know any language, so if you want them to speak, you've got to give them the language and then basically ask them to give it back to you. And that's, the, and that's exactly what the textbooks do. But that's not what task-based language teaching is about. Task-based language teaching is about using the learner's own resources. And if they don't have any linguistic resources initially, you have to use their non-linguistic resources, their ability to infer meaning from context, their ability to use gesture, their ability to sometimes make use of their L1, etc. And I've certainly seen task-based materials developed for complete beginners. Actually, it sounds like uh, machinima could possibly be used in, in that context for, for really early learners. But as you mentioned then ESP, um, and particularly with reference, you, you talked about um, secretaries or administrators. I mean, again, that as you were saying that, I was thinking machinima, machinima, because you could easily do 
uh, easily make machinima for specific purposes, you know, to help people in, in particular roles. I know we've actually done it in a different context altogether, but we've done head teachers interviewing parents, and this is to train the head teachers. So we had awful parents and really complex problems, and then we put them together in the interview situation in Second Life and filmed it so that they could go over it after and um, see how it was, how it could be improved and all that sort of mm. thing. So I guess yeah. for ESP, Machinima might be a really useful resource. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, my example, I was talking about hotel receptionists. Um, and uh, um, one interesting idea that, that that I just had about Mashima is that one might use a Mashima to show what a receptionist does wrong. You know, we, we, we tend to focus always on giving input about what is right. But what would be quite interesting is to show how a receptionist does something wrong and to develop a uh, and, and to develop a Mashima which shows the receptionist doing a whole series of wrong things, saying the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing with the customer, etc. And use that as a basis to get the students to think about what they're doing wrong, how they do it right. So one might produce two Mashima, one where uh, the receptionist is doing everything wrong, and then another one where they're doing everything the right way. And they would first of all watch the wrong one, discuss about what they're doing wrong, then look at the right one, etc. More good ideas. I'm writing down all these ideas. You're just saying them. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, the, the, the idea of showing of showing what is not sort of good practice communicatively through a machina strikes me as quite an interesting one. You know, developing learners' understanding and awareness of what is not pragmatically appropriate. Yes, uh, and that might be that might be something that could be that could be quite quite interesting. Certainly, something we can investigate. Okay, can we just do one last question then? So, okay. as is that okay? Are you still happy? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Okay, as an advocate of TBLT, what is your vision of how it should be used? Should it replace the traditional approaches or should it be a supplement to them? Uh, I think the, the problem with answering questions like that is that um, the question is a very general one and it's not it doesn't address a particular group of learners working in a particular situation, right? And therefore, it's not really possible for me to give a general answer to that. I would have to take a particular situation and say what role I think task-based language teaching would have in that particular situation. So okay. let me let me take two situations and then and then say how I think task-based language teaching should fit in, right? Let's take a uh, very much an English as a foreign language situation or a French or German as a foreign language situation where the learners are predominantly, predominantly reliant on the classroom for obtaining any input and communicative opportunities opportunities because they don't exist readily outside the classroom. Now, what I would probably favor in that type of situation, presuming that the learners are beginner or low intermediate or intermediate level learners, I would want to use the classroom as a opportunity to give them experience of the communicative conditions that ultimately they may have to experience in order to use English in real life. So that would require task-based language teaching because the purpose of task-based language teaching is to try to create inside the classroom the very similar communicative conditions to those that 
that will be experienced in, in real life. So what would be the role for uh, a more traditional, more formal approach, PPP uh, approach? I think there is, there is still a need for that, but I probably wouldn't want to use the classroom time for it. I would want to use homework time for it. I would want to use outside of class, class time to get the learners to treat language as an object. I would want to give them vocabulary to learn. I would want to give them grammar exercises to do. And I think that that could easily be done for homework outside the classroom. So I would want to use the classroom to get them to experience language as a tool. And then treating language as an object, I would have a variety of quite traditional type materials that they could do at home for homework. And of course, the teacher would have to check up that they've done those. So that's one situation. Let's imagine now that we have a, uh, another situation. Let's say that, um, let's say that we have a group of very advanced language learners. Um, to, again, perhaps in an EFL situation. Now, these are advanced learners. They've already developed very considerable communicative skills. What do they really need? Well, what they probably need is um, they need materials that are going to perhaps uh, focus on accuracy, focus on pragmatic correctness, um, uh, develop their ability to produce certain types of written discourse, certain types of written genre, etc. Now, task-based teaching may have some role in that, but the basic purpose of task-based teaching is to develop communicative competence, communicative skills. These advanced learners already have that. So arguably, you don't want to spend all your class time with task-based language teaching. You want to spend a lot of time developing their explicit understanding about how discourse works, about the, the pragmatic norms of politeness in this situation and that situation, etc. So in other words, what I'm really trying to say is that there's no straight answer to your question, that the balance between task-based language teaching materials and more traditional materials that involve treating language as an object. The balance is going to vary enormously depending on the particular teaching situation that you're in, the proficiency of the students, uh, what their goals are, etc. Long Any answer. Interest. Sorry. No, not a long answer. Absolutely wonderful answer. Thank you very much. That's really kind. Well, you've given us masses to think about, both uh, just with task-based language teaching itself and, of course, with fitting machinima into that. Um, lots of food for thought there, so thank you very much for uh, for sharing your time with us. Well, well no, very, very kind. You. Actually, you've made me think, you know. I mean, I hadn't really had any time to think about how machinima might really be used in a task-based approach, and I don't think we fully answered that question, but you certainly got me thinking about it, and I went. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, Thanks ever so much. It's really kind of you.